As an architect, people would expect me to talk about towers and to talk about great buildings, but um, I'm far more interested in the mine dump that lies beyond Ponte City and the archive of capital accumulation in Johannesburg, because to a large extent it exists. I mean, Johannesburg is a weird city. It has a mine right in the middle of it. And what we see is a landscape that is produced out of like um, decades and decades of extraction uh, that gave rise to all kinds of migration from across the Southern African region and also reaching as far afield as Australia, North America um, and Europe. And I think that very often we forget um, how the city was built um, through an economy of extraction and how these towers were only made possible by the things that were drawn from the earth. Um, but even more significant uh, than the mine dump is the life that exists beyond it. Um, so when apartheid spatial planners were planning for uh, massive housing developments for Africans and um, other people of color, um, they decided that it would be better to put them on the south side of the mine dump because that is on the receiving end of the winds. So all of the toxins that come off the cyanide slumps from the, dump, from the dumps would actually move southward into places like Soweto. So you have all kinds of like health issues associated with people who live on the lee side of the wind. Um, it's the least profitable land, it's the least valuable land, and it's on the other side of the waste that is associated with extraction. So there's a very long history of people being placed in wasteland. The discovery of gold um, catapulted Johannesburg into a major economic center in the world. You had this massive influx and Johannesburg sprang up as a city almost overnight. The interesting thing about Johannesburg, and uh, Charles von Onselen talks about this, is that in the first 10 years of its development, Johannesburg was essentially a big brothel. There were 60 brothels in the inner city of Johannesburg in canteens, cafes and hotels. And most of the sex workers were women who were brought in from Eastern Europe and America. I think, I think that Ponte is one of these uh, buildings in Johannesburg that has mythological status because um, probably in the 1960s and 1970s it was this icon of modernity and, and where the apartheid nation state was going economically in terms of forging this like metropolitan uh, white supremacist uh, state and how the city was a fulcrum and an expression of that and I think that it's rapid transformation with the crumbling of apartheid in, in, in a sort of colonial imaginary represented a kind of nightmare or a dystopia. So a lot of the time when people think about Johannesburg or write about Johannesburg, Ponte or the city. Ponte uh, occupies a, a space in that literature or in that imagination as a space of darkness or as a site of loss. And I think that this narrative of loss um, is indicative of a crisis in, the, in, in our imagination about what Johannesburg is and also what it could be, which is a center for the most cosmopolitan African urban culture in the Southern Hemisphere. I think what happened in the post-94 period um, and after the Truth and Reconciliation Commission is that there was an agreement that we would have some symbolic reparations and that's why symbolism and aesthetics become very important because um, the way in which we reconcile with our history of dispossession is through an economy of symbols and and Johannesburg is a city that 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 thrives on a uh, um, proliferation of surfaces and a proliferation of symbols and art um, while having a life of its own, participates in this economy of images mm. that is meant to help us reconcile with our history symbolically. So it seems to me that there was a kind of displacement of material economic uh, restitution into the realm of symbolism and art. Mm. And so we are supposed to feel good and to aspire towards an alternative future and, and to have buildings that represent uh, transcendence of history um, but I think that there's a component that still needs to be addressed which is the issue of land and inequality.